Hey guys, and welcome to the special edition of Mega Bridge 46 Radio. The first one we're going to talk about is WrestleMania. This, this is WrestleMania week, again. We, yeah, so I'm a huge wrestling fan, that's no secret. I mean, you got Dave Batista in the MCU, you got John Cena. Gonna be joining the DCEU with uh, the Suicide Squad. And you got Dwayne The Rock Johnson. With, of course, none other than, uh, with the, uh, with, uh, with play Black Adam. But, yeah, both men are gonna be, well, one man is in Fast and Furious and the other. It's gonna be in the fast. It's gonna be in Fast Nine. It's gonna be on F Nine, the Fast Saga, which is one more before the final film. But yeah, he already was it. Yeah, there was Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. Whew. So yeah, let me get to see it. I'll get to the match. Number 10, Rock versus Cena 2, WrestleMania 29. Now, this is a story all about how, how this robbery got started. And just take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how The Rock and John Cena get the championship match at WrestleMania. Okay. Okay, well, uh, it's time for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air reference. We're going to talk about Long story short. Back in the 2011, we heard uh, The Rock talking smack to John Cena. But they asked him to marine, and then he mentioned he wasn't due, which is a pretty bad movie. And the marine, too, yeah. Uh, not the one with Ted DiBiase, but the. Uh, but the first one with John Cena, since Randy Orton was discharged, was disarmably dis discharged from the military after going AWOL. But, yeah, that's not how it started. It started with Rock after his seven year absence of WWE, making an official appearance to WrestleMania. You know, with the host WrestleMania in Florida, which was the courtesy of the match. With the course, the, the with the match, however, a dead Derry D championship match at the main event with Miss Challenging Charging us it, Alberto Del Rio. Was the one who win the Royal Rumble, but yet, at the same time, he lost the match against the Rated R Superstar. Just like weeks, who, like, you know, just weeks before retirement. Well, not, not decision, but forcefully, has another injury to the match. And Edge, of course, was, you know, We're going to get to in a bit. But. With. Uh, John. Uh, with John Cena of course. See he had the. And at. Uh, Extreme Rules. In the Extreme Rules match. Well. Well in a, well, still cage match against. Miz and John Morrison. The Miz lost the title to John Cena. And of course, and of course, we're not going to get to the further details of like the death of Osama bin Laden. But 
However, we're going to be talking about is uh, they, uh, and then of course, to celebrate the Rock's birthday, John Cena has got the championship. And Rock cracks the party. And of course, his half, you know, never went this. So that unfortunately, he never did. As he lost the match to see a punk at the Money and Bank. At the main event for the championship. And right before, and they lost it again against CM Punk, who's now the undisputed WWE champion, right before Kevin Nash interrupted him. And then, of course, and of course, Alfonso Del Rio have cashed in against CM Punk and won it. And then, at Night of Champions, lost it. Lost it to Cena, and then he won it back in Hell in Cell right before our true who I still don't think, who I still don't think the hill turn he's having works on him anymore because I am not, I am not part of East One, however, so I say, not part of this, but yeah, but again, like I say, his hill turn does not work. And then at Vengeance, what retained it against Cena at the last match standing match. And then, and then he lost it to CM Punk at Survivor Series. And CM Punk retained it again and again and again and again. And then, revealed two things. One, in Raw 1000, just as Rock was given the uh, Rock bottom, See a Punk attacked him and turning his back on the WWE Universe. And then, and then right after a Raw episode, Cena got counted out to 10, and then he was attacked by Cena Punk, who revealed he's a Paul Heyman guy. And he's got Paul Heyman. And then Paul Heyman, and then of course Cena, you know, has his Worst luck. That's his worst luck. And, uh, you know. And I give right back the opportunity to take the uh, championship. Which right back winning streak came to an end after Brad Maddox, that evil little, that evil little low blow him. And then, and then, and then of course, Jill Ember and Cena lost it. It lost the TLC match, but it became a WrestleMania match. By winning the Royal Rumble match, by throwing right back out of the rope. And then, of course, now we are at that point. With The Rock, he uh, got interference for the shield. And yeah, so one of the members was his cousin. His real life cousin Roman Reigns, aka Joe and Noah. And of course, the bench was gonna vacate the top, but the Rock don't want it that way. And then he won it. Now, which of course brings us to this match. Yeah. Now the this match, John Cena versus The Rock for the WWE Championship. Two weight. Two long awaited years. Oh, no, wait. One and third quarter awaited years. Later, as I like, you know, the uh, taunt of their opponent's moves. And then, of course, with Cena had the uh, advantage, but The Rock got the upper hand. And then, unfortunately, the AA seals the deal for Cena's redemption and The Rock's. Not downfall, but The Rock's respect to John Cena. Now, I gotta say that that is a good match. You know, at the ending, The Rock gave John Cena his respect. And not number nine. Now we are, of course, going to talk about WrestleMania with 28 from 2012. No, we're going to get to the main event in the very, very soon. And of course, 
was that, um, yeah, and I was biased. Yeah, and I've been biased for that for years. I still haven't gotten over it. But it deserved to be in the spot. Daniel Bryan with AJ Lee versus Sheamus for the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, to make a long story short, let's see. The ECW uh, Championship was was uh, Chavo Guerrero versus Keg in a world record breaking championship with, like, of course, in a matter of eight seconds. But Cade just out of nowhere gave up the chunk sled, then one, two, three. But, but since that title's uh, no more, since ECW, the brand is no more, we got to this. The Rock. Oh, sir. Daryl Bryan. He, he was fired at 2010. He was fired at 2010. Oh, wait, wait. He was brought into the WWE with a rally competition at NXT, and then he was eliminated. And then, of course, he became, alongside with the other rookies, the, the hillish stable known as the Nexus. And uh, yeah, I know it's disgusting, but. But I know you're not going to like me for saying this, but I thought it was funny when he was strangling Justin Roberts with a tie. But that's a big no-no. Because -no. this is supposed to be a family-oriented, you know? Well, I mean, sure, I swear, but... But this is supposed to be family-oriented violence. And then... And then he just told John Cena he is not better than him. And gave him a spit in the face. But, however, let's see, John Cena, Justin Roberts, Vince McMahon liked that, have liked the uh, idea of him doing that. Yeah, even Justin Roberts, the one who he strangled, liked that idea, you know, of him getting strangled. But, the second is, the higher-ups are not, however. So, therefore, Daniel Bryan was let go, sadly. And then the Nexus, he was kicked out of Nexus. But, but it's not all gloom and doom for Del Bryan. Like, within a month later, he's been rehired by WWE. And of course, gave him a face run. As, as Del Bryan. And then, of course, he's an up and coming guy. And he won the United... Well, we're going to get to this. The United States Championship against his mentor, former mentor, The Miss. And then... And then he lost it. But, however... But, however, we got is, uh, we're going to get to NASCAR shortly. Well, well, I'll be, I'm going to get to it in a bit. But, whatever happened, it did. He won the Money in the Bank match for SmackDown with the blue briefcase. Well, Del Rio, for Raw, gets the red one to represent their brand. And then, and then, of course, Dale Bryan has got the uh, match. Of course, you know, sorry, cash in against Mark Henry, then Mark Henry has been injured. But of course, he was given back the briefcase. He was forced to give it the title, and he was also had to get his briefcase back. Until uh, around TLC, Mark Henry lost the uh, championship in a battle with the Behemoths. The Big Show won. But Mark Henry's not done with him yet. He just used the steel chair. And then Deborah cashed in against Big Show. And then one, two, three. Deborah's the champion, and Michael Cole was in shock 
as that's a guy who he criticized for a lot. Who we're going to get to in the next uh, Day O'Brien, you know, match. And of course, Sheamus had entered, had entered a match. And then, of course, survived and becoming the last one to win after eliminating Chris Jericho. And then he gets a spot at WrestleMania. So, therefore, he's, he's going to have to pick. So, therefore, he's not ready. So, or in that case, he's, um, he gets a pardon from doing the Elimination Chamber match. And after Dale Bryan had survived against six men inside the Elimination Chamber by defeating Santino Barrella via submission. The guy who was, who lost, who was eliminated first, well, in one second, and then he was eliminated lastly by Del Rio, thinking he won to WrestleMania. <sighs> but, and of course, then then at WrestleMania, I still haven't gotten over that match. Dale Bryan have, have lost the match in 18 seconds, which is a new record for, for the championship reign. But, but Dale Bryan held it for days since the TLC match. After retaining at the Royal Rumble and the Steel Cage match, and it's not going to learn to shiver, but it was all flushed out of the toilet after a kiss from AJ Lee. For good luck, and then of course he was eliminated. Well, of course he was pinned. One, two, three. But yeah, not my favorite, but it's gotta go into the countdown. Number number eight. The uh, well, it's hard to choose from which Undertaker match I just witnessed, but. It's got to be like three Undertaker's matches, of course. So we're going to start off with the, uh, the one. Uh, not the um, end of the era, because I'm going to say that other one with the Metallica. Let's see. He has six confrontations total, but this one is number five. So, he uh, gets Sean, so he's getting uh, Sean Michaels three times, and then all the way to 25th, WrestleMania, he did it. And then Shawn Michaels put his career on the line, but we're going to get to that in a bit. And then, of course, Triple H was one in a match against The Undertaker to, to break the streak. Right before Brock Lesnar does. But it's start well, okay, let's start off in 2011. The uh, Undertaker, who's a uh, who's aging, and of course And of course, you know, with the match going on, Triple H try to use the sledgehammer against the dead man, but but the Undertaker was, of course, put him in a hellscape, and Triple H tapped out. And then Triple H was the win was the loser, but he walked out. Not on him, but walked. While Undertaker, the winner, gets carried out. Not a, not on the stretcher, but carries out in the cart. And then a year later came in, just as John Laurinaitis was going to be fired from WWE for, for the controversy involving CM Punk, that he's going to, going to cheat out of CM Punk for winning, for winning the, uh, WWE Championship as he's sick and tired of CM Punk's antics. 
And then Triple H, of course, you know, puts him in, and of course, gave him one thing to kiss his ass. But, but it's a family show, so. So he said, "What well, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Well, try to fire him. He was interrupted by the gong. The Undertaker has come back. And then, of course, he, and then, of course, it'll be the end of an era match, an end of their rivalry. And then, of course, we have the end of an era inside the Hell in a Cell match with Shawn Michaels being the guest referee. And then, of course, it's with uh, Triple H did his best with that Shawn Michaels. Did his best. Shawn Michaels was put through the Hell's Gate. And then, Triple H lost the match, but he was carried by both the special guest referee and the winner of the match. And the three had embraced each other, as it marks the end of an era of their rivalries. And then, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Now we get to number seven. I know this one is complete bias. Uh, but, uh, well, not a bias. Is, you know, we're not going to include Robert Ray's. But we're going to talk about is, is of course, the, uh, is, of course, the shield. Is of course, you know. Oh, oh, should I say it was, of course, it would be, uh, you know. Well, well, I can't think of, you know, because they didn't have their wedding streak broken, but. Hmm. Oh, yeah! Triple H versus Batista. And a career match. And a career ending match. So. It starts off with celebrating Ric Flair's 70th birthday. Well me. I don't want to be invited. Because I'm not a. It's no secret I hate the Flair family. Because they cheat a lot. They cheat. And then of course with The Undertaker. Gone, and of course, Triple H being a hills, you know, lost after loss after loss. Well, the humiliating loss after humiliation after humiliating loss after humiliating loss and after humiliating loss. But without the aid of his wife, of course, he will avenge his friend who was assaulted by the returning Batista. Which of course caused Triple H to be the face, and Batista still a heel. And of course, this demands a match against him at WrestleMania. And of course, Triple H don't want to, but until they give me what I want, he accepts. And then of course, would put the stakes. A career-ending match to end Triple H's career, so he can end his career on a high note. But at the, uh, of course, at the, uh, at a no holds bar match, Triple H has the upper hand, and of course, right before Batista counters, the infamous no three. Flyers to the nose ring. Yeah, I get it if you guys are very uncomfortable to watch this. But, uh, you know, well, well, you don't have to listen. Uh, you can skip the new, next few seconds. But, but uh, you know. But, yeah. The nose ring, however, that just, you know, scared a lot of kids, but it just, but it just made the adults throw up. 
But then Batista countered, and then of course used up still steps. And then of course that's not the first time Triple H was in a career ending match. Which resulted in a victory. And then of course we have uh, some we're gonna have some, of course, of everything. You're like, but of course, with Batista using his ledger to try to find a way to end his career, but Ric Flair still stopped, stopped him. What? I thought Ric Flair was supposed to be in a hospital. But then, no, 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 not in my house, not today. No, 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 mm -mm -mm. but the but the Triple H, of course, give him a pedigree to the still steps, and, and he saved his career, and he had saved his career. One, two, three, and his career continues. Well, looks like Triple H will not end his career anytime soon, unless he says. Unless he says his career, you know, decides if his career is over. But, that was a heartfelt, but hey, at least he deserved it. Okay, now we're on to number six. Number six, of course. Hmm. Number six, number six, number six. Number six. Yeah, it's a hard one, but I gotta go with. Oh yeah, that one. I'm gonna go with uh with the uh with the rocks. Record breaking the tents. Well it's not a match or anything. Oh, no, wait, that's, uh, uh, oh, yeah, where the Cowboy Stadium has broken the record of, has broken the record for the attendance with 93,000 approximately from Pontiac Stadium, but is it else, uh, Cowboy Stadium? It's 101 approximately. Attendance at Dallas at the AT&T Stadium at Arlington has broken the record. And of course, records broken. Just want to say thank you everyone who attended. But at the uh, Cowboy said, so well, no, we're not going to do the, like this year's. Well, because it's not ready. And also, I don't have the time, you know? Okay? But yeah, we're going to go to, of course, WrestleMania. We had to do WrestleMania throughout the years. But I couldn't do the uh, 90s one. And that was the alive. And of course, I didn't watch WWE in the 90s. No, because I was just a kid. And my mom won't let me watch it. It's violent. And of course, we're going to have the uh, honorable, uh, of course, mentions shortly. But you know what? Yeah. This match, of course, is none other than the, the double victory between friends. Let's see. Long story short, right before their. Uh, Tragedies, one ended up in the WWE Hall of Fame, and the other ended the legacy he created. I mean, ended his own legacy he created, sadly. And, yeah. Let's see, uh, back in the, around the, the 2003 year, Eddie Guerrero was at the bottom of the ground. 
Well, not not dead or anything, but you know. Of course, with Eddie Guerrero, he just wanted to win a match against. He just wanted to win a match against Eddie. Sorry, uh, Kurt Angle, and he didn't. But until No Way Out, with the uh, boot, however, he won the match. And won the WWE Championship. Yep. Yep. And while Michael Cole shouted, Eddie won. And Taz, however, is biased and said Eddie cheated. But I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, sure they, sure they cheat, but hey, at least they're honest about it. I'm more offended of the Guerreros rather than the uh, Flares. Because they are the true dynasty. You know, with... With, uh... With Rachel. You know, the the daughter to Eddie Guerrero. The one who's married to Aiden English. And, of course, you know... That was the best part. But, however... At the uh, World Heavyweight Championship picture, we see the first entry, none other than Chris Benoit from from Quebec, Canada. Or Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You know, coming up there, and of course he survived against 29 other men. Like, literally, he's in the number one spot, and he finished th first. And he gets a spot at WrestleMania, which, of course, is Shawn Michaels and Eddie Guerrero. Sorry, Shawn and Triple H, who were going head-to-head -head against the World Heavyweight Championship. And then, Eddie Guerrero had the one, but, you know, the Chris Benoit. Just put him in the crippler. So actually, you know, with that fighting, and then Ben Wallace down, and then of course, and of course that both men, of course, got one guy receiving a headbutt, a flying headbutt, which of course we're going to talk about in a bit. And then Chris, of course, put Triple H into a into the crippling. Claw into a or towards the Wolfery. He's the Wolfery Crippler. Put him in the Crippler Crawl, which is like the Lapel Lock, and then later the Yes Lock. And then he began to tap. Triple H tapped out, and then Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit have won, had their WrestleMania moment. With a confetti, they celebrate with his wife Nancy and their son Daniel. And of course, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to this in a little bit. The, the aftermath. And then of course with with Chris Benoit. Of course, with you know both of them originated from ECW and WCW, respectfully. Then Eddie joined WWE first, and then and then Chris later on. And then both men were beginning to have our, embrace each other and celebrate together. As those two are pretty good friends. A Latino and a Canadian. Hmm. I wonder why it's so familiar. Nah. But now... Well, this is the worst part I had to do, but I got to do it anyway. The aftermath of, of the uh, match. After the match. Like, the Eddie Guerrero was on the top until, until later on in the pay-per-view. He lost to JBL. And then at SummerSlam, it was no picnic for either one. 
But I meant by either one, I mean, it was the picnic for Chris Benoit. And he was uh, pinned. No, one. And it's SummerSlam. One, two, three. He lost the World Heavyweight Championship to Randy Orton. And, of course, he, he admired Orton's performance. But it wasn't all gloom and doom for, for the two men. Next year, Eddie Guerrero won the World Heavyweight Championship. And, and then the year later, after losing the World Heavyweight Championship, Chris Benoit won the United States Championship after being around Jordan at 25 seconds. And that's the same time he made the coffee. Yep, and that's the same time that Chris in a funny montage. Yes. That's guy. That's gonna be at his best resume, but not resume. Well, that's a SummerSlam moment. Of course, we get to is the twenty-five seconds of copy, and he's like, "I win again." But unfortunately, it was wasn't gloom and doom, but then it fortunately became gloom. Well, in two thousand five, with where Eddie Guerrero was found. Unconscious by by his nephew Chavo Guerrero Jr., who's three years older than Eddie. So, well, not who was three years younger than Eddie. And Eddie was found like a foam in his mouth hotel. Did the paramedics arrive? But he was already dead on arrival. But he was dead on arrival, sadly. And which broke the fans, not just WWE fans, but also his fellow colleagues, like John Cena, Rey Mysterio, who had a feud with uh, Eddie, like, or, you know, for custody with Dominic. I forgot to mention that. Who's now part of the WWE? And I'm glad to have Dominic aboard. And of course, Chris Benoit. That broke him the most. That even though it was gloom, and we're now we're now we're at this path. So it's two men. In the aftermath of Eddie's death, the title was vacated, but later won by. But it was later won by, uh, oh, well, later by Triple H, and then Batista won the Royal Rumble match. And then turned face, we'll give it a thumbs down, and he wants, this, wants the World Heavyweight Championship. And of course, that was the biggest moment ever. And, but, however, Eddie was also inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame at 2006, posthumously, by Chris Benoit, Charles Guerrero, and Rey Mysterio. And of course, on his behalf, is his wife, Vicky Guerrero, and his two daughters accepting the honor. And now... Where things get worse for Chris. He lost the uh, United States Championship and then, of course. Of course, if you watch the dark side of the ring, it's on there, by the way. Parts one and two about Chris Benoit. Like, uh, you know, his triumph on part one, and then later became his tragedy. Yeah, yeah, there's an episode on him. And of course, sadly, with uh, around 2007, he was like, you know, of course, part of. And then he later was drafted to, of course, to ECW. 
He was directed to ECW, so which is now a brand created by Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman, the mastermind of ECW. And it, of course, was supposed to be the demise of Vince. Well, I, like within a week later, we see Vince McMahon looking around, making sure there's something suspicious in the in the lemon scene, and then the limo exploded. Of course, Vince McMahon was dead. Which were and then he was challenged challenging Bobby Lashley to to for the ECW championship. Oh boy, this is the moment we've all been waiting entirely for or so long because Chris Benoit was nowhere to be found. Even Chavo haven't heard back from him since their last conversation. He haven't heard back from Chris. And yeah, he and he was also the one in a few to speak about Eddie Guerrero's legacy. And because that's his nephew, you know? That's Eddie's nephew. But it then tragedy had struck on around Monday with the uh, suspicions that Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel were found dead. Were found dead, like, uh, like, uh, what's been going on? And then, of course, of course, that Chris Benoit was found hanging around. Like he was hung, and there was a gruesome discovery that which interrupted the next episode of Raw, which was supposed to be the demise of Vince McMahon as we see him alive and well. Well, Vince, so then, of course, no one was in attendance, and the commentators, however, are the ones attending. And they talk about their uh, life, like uh, with Ross, Jerry the King Lawler, and Jim Ross. SmackDown, uh, Taz or uh, JBL, and Michael Cole, and ECW's Joey Styles, and Todd Grisham. Talking about uh, Chris Benoit's uh, success and legacy. And then later on ECW, 24 hours later, the investigator said it was a double murder suicide, and then, thus, Chris Benoit's name and history, and of course, merchandise, and being featured in video game and uh, everything successful about him were erased from WWE entirely. And with that, there will be no mention of there was no mention of him whatsoever after that. Okay, that's it. We're going to take a brief intermission, and then we're going to talk about the bet, top five matches and, of course, the honorable matches first. Okay, guys. Now, we are... Uh, before we're going to get to five through one, just let me take out my sales, and it's time for me to... for some honorable mentions. First one. Robert Reigns versus The Undertaker. Now, I know it's a pretty biased opinion. Like, of course, I didn't like that either, but... But with the match, The Undertaker... Law, you know, may have lost the match just for the second time, but... He still won the hearts of fans everywhere, even though taking off his Trayvon jacket and hat. And of course, this was a tragedy. 
But the next one, of course, is The Undertaker versus John Cena at WrestleMania in 2018. We know that John Cena has called out, had called out The Undertaker. Then we saw Elias playing House of the Rising Sun in New Orleans. It's of course resulted in in a lot of things. You know? The Rock versus Eric Rowan and John Cena returns. We see that The Rock was being confronted by the Wyatt family. And then Eric Rowan came in, volunteered, and then John, and of course, one, two, three. It's six seconds, record broken. Because it's not the only one that's broken. But, of course, John Cena returned and helped The Rock. To stop the Wyatt family. Now, that was the best moment. Well, we're going to save that moment. For the top 10 WrestleMania moments. But, the, uh, and of course, we're going to get to, of course, the first ever women's match for the women's title. It's Bye Bye Divas title and Hello Women's title. Right before the bread extension, or the re-bread extension, we see Charlotte Flair, Nikki Bella, and of course, Bailey. Oh, no, no, or Becky Lynch, squared off against each other. For, the, in, to be the inaugural Wim, Ruffs Women's Champion. Because it's red. And that's a symbol of Raw. And of course, I didn't like the exterior, but hey, heads up for that match. Because it's a women's revolution. And it's, uh, you know, it's not for a political agenda or anything, but... But, but it did have... But they did have their own pay-per-view because... They were not allowed to go to Saudi Arabia. They were not allowed to go to Saudi Arabia to be entertained. Right before Saudi Arabia became very controversial. You know, because the la last time that wrestling got co controversial, well, we already knew that North Korea is the one. And of course, Triple H versus Seth Rollins. It was a he was a prospect for the authority, and then, and then late years later, in 2016, he was betrayed. He was betrayed by Seth Rollins. Oh no! Oh no! Wait. Triple H betrayed Seth Rollins. And then, of course, uh, the Rollins, of course, that's right down, you know? But at the end, Rollins won the match against at their humiliating Stephanie. But, yeah. And of course, this one is also controversial. But bear with me on this. It's Trump versus Big Bad in the Battle of the Billionaires. With Trump showcasing Bobby Lashley with Vince picking Umaga. And the loser had to be Shade Bald. Would have been great if, if Stone Cold would have stunned him and also shaved his head. Shake Trump's head. But yeah, it was right before Trump became the president, and of course, is and of course he sees he had a lot of dirt already. He's got a lot of dirt already in his hands, 
like with the uh, business and etc. But but yeah, he get he's a successful business man, but unfortunately he's not. He's uh he's a corrupt guy. He's corrupt. Trump is corrupt, but aside the point, but yeah. But but that was the best match with Stone Cold Steve Austin as the special guest referee. And Donald Trump had lighted punches to to Vince McMahon. And of course they and they was really hilarious. Not just hilarious because of Vince McMahon getting his head shaven. But Donald Trump also gets the Stone Cold Stunner treatment. And yeah, that was pretty hilarious. Which landed him in the WWE Hall of Fame. And also landed him to be the President of the United States. But. Yeah. I have a pretty... I have a pretty, I have standards about him being president, however, but I'm not for a woke reasons, but for my own reasons. So we're not going to get into that. But, however, we're going to get into the number five through one spot. Now we're back. I'm going to go get myself another refreshment of drink, just in case. Before we're going to continue on with the uh, number five. Which, of course, it's going to be like my own standards. Number five, John Cena versus versus The Rock. One at WrestleMania 28. A once in a lifetime match. See, it was a current superstar versus led WWE legend. It was a soon to be the actor versus the current actor. The guy who who's becoming a hero versus the one who is, of course, thinks he's the hero. Well, you get the you get the chance of it, but however, we see John Cena with Machine Gun Kelly singing his song for his entrance, and then for John Cena's life story. And then comes John Cena's cue of his theme song, You Can't See Me. And then we see Flo Rida singing his theme song for WrestleMania. And then singing Wild Ones, which is the life story of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And then the famous, Could you smell what The Rock is cooking? Now, this one was the best match, heads down. But it's in a double fight spot, so of course we see that if John Cena, as soon as he get, try to do the, you can't see me. But the rock counters with the rock bottom, and then one, two, three. Ding, 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 ding. The rock won the match. Which, of course, lets to see this downfall, and next year, Redemption. Yeah. Number four. The second one is the Undertaker match. Taker's winning streak came to an end. Well, sure, but it's a shocker. Just like the, just like the uh, moment we're going to be talking about. And of course, The Undertaker, 
It was, tw- it was 21 and 0, and his life match was CM Punk. And of course, entered, and then Brock Lesnar making the entrance. And Paul Heyman just getting ready, getting ready to cue the beast. And then here comes Brock Lesnar entering the ring. And two were squaring up. And of course, giving The Undertaker a suplex sit, said he, or right This is right before the birth of Suplex City. And of course, well, we're going to leave that a tie. Well, Never Dream will be a tie in between. We're going to discuss with. And then, of course, and then the F5, and then one, two, kick out. Yeah, but Joel H, of course, you know, they got a little bit of fight. And then next suplex, and then second F5, one, two, kick out. And of course, the last breath, and then last suplex, and then the last F5. One, two, oh my god! And yeah, it happened, ladies and gentlemen. The Undertaker's winning streak is over. Brock Lesnar ended the streak. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say I told you so, but ladies and gentlemen, I told you so. Brock Lesnar and the winning streak of The Undertakers. And he keep on gloating and gloating and gloating and gloating and gloating and gloating about it. But! Is that all? Let's hope so, but it's not over. Brock Lesnar's triumphant of winning against Brock Lesnar. Sorry, against Undertaker became his downfall the next year's WrestleMania. Of course, he was on top of the mountain. He he won against John Cena, merging the two titles to become one, known as the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And then, and he uh, conquered John Cena, and of course stopped everyone from winning the championship, including several else. Right before the snowstorm in Connecticut, re-aired the both hit both their match and the Royal Rumble, which of course was a pretty uh, low standard, which was going to be. We're of course we and next time I would get to the worst worst finishes of the Royal Rumble. The worst Royal Rumble moments. But yeah, Roman Reigns won. With the help of The Rock, and everybody was not happy about it. And then of course, which leads to number three in a what three-way time. What? And both of them triple match threat matches. <gasps> First, we're gonna get to Seth Rollins with the said WrestleMania match. With that WrestleMania match, of course, and of course, it was the birth of Suplex City. And I don't want to get to that last word. Where, what Paul Heyman just said. At the triple, of course, you know. Set with one, two. Or Paul, and of course, was really angry. And then, of course, both bet her down. And then, here comes the cue off. Here comes the cue. Of Seth Rollins, who won the Money in the Bank briefcase, and of course was running like hell. 
and then cash in, and then successful. And then, of course, he uh, curb stomp, or get Robert Reigns out of the way, and then did the curb stomp too. Brock Lesnar. And then Brock Lesnar re recounters, and then back Seth Rollins, and one, two, kick out, and then one more stomp to Brock the Beast, and that was the best moment. Even though I mean, I do admit I don't like I don't like the I get Seth Rollins catching it, but hey. It's history when it counts. But it is, of course, what it counts. It's the best moment. But, however, he's a hill, but then again, history is history. And it is, hands down, the best moment. But, but it's not the only one that's, that's in the number three spot. The next one, it's not all about the man, but... It's also about the man who's actually a woman and a three-way women's match. Title versus title. You know? Or or no, let's make it fair. Winner takes all. It starts off with the with the women's revolution, but of course, Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch were brought in, were called up from NXT, and they and those three are the founding women of the women's revolution, even though they were the four horsewomen alongside Bailey. But But everyone is so gangsta. Until. Now let's hope it, but however. We're going to begin. And of course at the 2018 Royal Rumble. With the first ever women's Royal Rumble match. And they get an opportunity for, for any of the women's women website from any brand. Raw or Smackdown. With after both Japanese superstars won, which is of course Asuka and Shinsuke Nakamura, and of course the two of them lost the match at WrestleMania, but one ended up with a heel turn. It's not Asuka, but it's rather Shinsuke Nakamura with a low blow. After a respect, low blow to AJ Styles. Now that's what I call a literal low blow. And that goes all the way to uh, by Ronda Rousey. Of course, was having a match against Nia Jax. It did, of course, unfortunately. But unfortunately, she was attacked by Alexa Bliss, who won the Money in the Bank briefcase. And then cast it against Nia Jax, and then, then won the championship, and then told her, called her an overhyped rookie, told her to get back in the line, and then Ronda Rousey wasn't having it, and then she became suspended. Good! I'm not a fan of either one. I'm not a fan of Alexa Bliss, nor am I a fan of Ronda Rousey, because me, in my opinion, Ronda Rousey is the most Overrated woman on a planet, of course, cheated at the UFC and cheated at WWE. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I, I, and again, I have standards for Ronda Rousey, and it's not very good standards. It's really, really bad standards. It's, and it's no secret. I really hate Ronda Rousey. As, you know, I'm more of a Gina Carano kind of guy. Because now that woman, she's a true pioneer. Or Gina Carano, she's a pioneer of, of said WWE. Or sorry, the MMA. And, she, and I would have been, and I would have, and she would have made an excellent WWE superstar. Right before she go into acting. 
But Ronda Rousey, really? And then at SummerSlam, after her suspension was lifted, she she shut out Alexa Bliss and then won, and then undeservedly won the Women's Championship of Raw. And then, of course, that opportunity after opportunity, and then... With the champion, and of course, with uh, Becky Lynch. But we're going to begin with Becky Lynch shortly. And then, of course, we landed the ropes for her at WrestleMania. And as for Charlotte Flair, she won the uh, championship for... Uh, and then, of course, ended Oscar's streak, and Oscar gave her respect. And to make a long story short, at SummerSlam, she was successfully retained against Becky Lynch, and of course, everyone, including myself, was booing at Charlotte for defeating Becky Lynch. And then, Becky Lynch turned heel, but everyone was liking it. And yeah, myself included. It's just no secret I hate the Flair fam. I don't like the Flair family. They cheat a lot. Because again, I'm not a fan of Ric Flair or his uh, S word of a daughter. And it has the L U in there. With, in between it, the S and the T. And it has the L U in between. But I usually call her. And now, time for Becky Lynch. Well, we know she got a, she had a lot of opportunities. And then, of course, she won the SmackDown Women's Championship against Alexa Bliss. Oh, no, wait. She became the inaugural winner of the SmackDown. The inaugural champion of SmackDown. And then lost it to uh, Carmella, who was the Money in the Bank winner. And then Carmella came in. And of course, she uh, was upset. And then, of course, yeah. And then Alexa Bliss, that little minx, had taken that away right before she lost it to Naomi at WrestleMania. And then Alexa Bliss lost it again against Nia Jax at WrestleMania for Buffer the Raw one. And then, of course, and of course, Charlotte Flair got what she deserved. And, uh, and then years, and then months later, another woman got what she deserved, and it's Ronda Rousey in a champion versus champion match. Where, of course, Becky Lynch is the one performing that as a heel, but yet she got a reaction of a baby face. But you know what? I like that better. It's, it, that I was told her, told her to get, I told Becky Lynch to get her. Get Rhonda. And I was, of course. You, you may say I'm sick in the head, but it's true. Again, I am not a Rhonda Rousey fan. I really hate Rhonda Rousey. And I don't like Charlotte Flair. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Becky Lynch guy, okay? But at the Royal Rumble, and of course, Becky Lynch had been injured, had been injured by a, had an injury and a loss to Oscar, in a battle. But yet, she won the war by winning, of course, despite of getting injured, was at uh, the Royal Rumble. And of course, she just won to work a tweaked knee. And of course, now that's what I call excellent selling. And then, of course, there's Charlotte Flair. Like, oh, no, no, no. And then, that's like, thanks for coming, Flair. Ha <laughs> ha. 
and that Charlotte Flair had unfortunately won the WWE Championship. And then, it, and of course, Ronda Rousey turned heel, and of course, I still don't like her. No matter face or heel, I still hate Ronda Rousey. And she ever say, even said, no more Mrs. Nice B-words. And of course, you know, as my standards can't get it go even low, well, that would stay at the same level. It stayed at the same level. And then, of course, we get to WrestleMania. Right before the COVID pandemic changed everything in New York. WrestleMania in New York. Right before. Well, Charlotte Flair entered in a helicopter ride for the Raw Women's Championship. Sorry, I'm mean, hoisting the SmackDown Women's Championship in a helicopter. It played the remix of her dad's theme. And then, of course, entering uh, Becky Lynch. Oh, wait, Becky Lynch goes first. Everyone was a while. And then everybody booted Charlotte. And then Ronda Rousey entered with Joan Jett singing her theme from the UFC, Bad Reputation, which is, of course, her song. And then introducing first is the challenger. And everybody cheered. And then mixed reactions for Charlotte, but heavy booing for Ronda Rousey. And I booed at both of them. Both champions. And then, of course, with, uh, with tapping out, with Ronda Rousey had tapped out. One, two, three, as Charlotte tried to break, but then it ended in a controversial matter. But hey, at least Becky Lynch deserved that championship. It don't matter. Well, she got both championships and tried for her one and the other. And Dell time for the aftermath of, of that. Of that match. Let's see. The one who uh, ordered the finish of Ronda Rousey, you know, injury Becky Lynch. Was supposed to end like in a kick out. And then Becky Lynch was supposed to pin. He got fired. And Ronda Rousey announcing after her defeat. That she'll no longer be part of WWE. Good. Good. Who needs her anyway? I don't. I really don't. Okay. Now. We got two more. Two more to go. And here it is, everyone. Number two. He's a legend. He's an Olympic gold medalist. It's true. It's damn true. Kurt Angle versus Barry Corbin. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's a miracle on Bourbon Street, which was the first ever debut, first ever pay-per-view event under, under the WWE Network. R.I.P. the U.S. version. 2014 through 2021. And of course, and of course, it was the interesting part of WWE. If we just want to say, happy for, happy for, uh, uh, happy for, yeah. There's a WWE Network giving us WrestleMania. And it was the best moment. Now, to continue on with Daniel Bryan. What brought him here? After humiliating the feet of uh, Sheamus, it went from bad to worse for him. As he lost the championship opportunity after losing to Sheamus. And then, of course, he was challenging. And, of course, a beat the clock challenge. The Miz was the first one to defeat. Was the first one to defeat uh 
Well, I forgot who's the opponent, but one that has the time to beat is uh, like around two minutes and something seconds. And then the second opponent, of course, is trying to beat Mrs. Tide, but Miss survived. And then next is Randy Orton. And then Orton, one, two, three, and Orton can survive by two seconds. But then the last one was Dan O'Brien versus Jared the King Lawler. And his Amory returned, and everybody was happy to see the King again. And then, of course, the King tapped out to the, to the yes lock. And then, Dan O'Brien... Had a match against CM Punk. It was on and off, and it was the best. It was the best, hands down. Even though I'm not a CM Punk fan, I'm a Daniel Bryan fan. Fight me, CM Punk fans. Your, your city's terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you, Chicago. You know, you got the worst sports teams, the worst wrestlers, and the worst pizzas. But let's take the buys one for last. And of course, and of course, that Dan Bryan, you know, did he wanted a battle against Charlie Sheen. But then it leads to Kane versus Dan Bryan at SummerSlam. And Dan Bryan won. But it was, uh, he was about to be married to AJ Lee, but then, of course, she became the general manager. And then she had to step down. And then, of course, Dan Bryan and Kane. Had to go anger management. Then they became the tag team champions. But I still think Dale Bryant is the only tag team champions. The only tag team champion. He deserved two belts. Kane don't deserve any. Yeah, fighting. But then, of course, at WrestleMania, they were successful against against the Against Big E and Dolph Ziggler, who Big E was a heel right before he became the part of the New Day with Xavier Woods. With Xavier Woods and Kobe Kingston, who we're going to get to in a bit. And of course, But unfortunately, like uh, Kobe, at the same time, the Shield have won the titles. Let's first with uh, Dean Ambrose. With Dean Ambrose as the champion. And, and with... Uh, Oh, sorry, with the United States Championship. And Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns won against Team Hell No with a championship of their own. And of course, the Tag Team Championships. Yeah, right before they lost it. Right before they lost the Tag Team Championship to the Rhodes Brothers, Goldust and Cody. Right before he became Stardust. And unfortunately, he. And it, yep, that is. For Dean Ambrose, he lost it at the Battle Royale for the championship. And it was Story of Illusion. But Dave Bryan, of course, at SummerSlam, got a WWE Championship opportunity against John Cena, and he won it. But, unfortunately, it was Randy Orton had cashed in after Triple H gave him a pedigree, which is the birth of the authority. Which was the birth of the, author of the authority. Not the, uh, you know, not just that, but also his championship run. And then, of course, he won the uh, championship of 90 champions, but of course, he was forced to vacate. 
And what? And of course, Lance Armstrong. Oh no, not Lance Armstrong, but Scott Armstrong, the referee, was fired by Triple H. And then, of course, they had Hell in a Cell at their vacation. He lost the championship too after a sweet tip of music by Shawn Michaels. And then, of course, the haunting of Cain. And of course, and of course, the, and of course, he and his real life uh, dead girlfriend, now wife, Bree Bella, or of course, uh, or of course, Brianna Garcia Danielson. She, of course, have have, of course, you know, helped him all the way through, and then, of course, at the uh, at the Royal, and of course, they did not go off with a hot start with the Royal Rumble. And I mean, the Royal Rumble itself in general in 2014, it was the worst. Not because the Hills won, because everything's about it worse. And I've also thought about the Royal Rumble match. Where it was supposed to be uh, Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan or Triple H at WrestleMania. Because Roman Reigns was a dark horse to win, and every thought, and he was eliminating everybody. But the fans had cheered for him when he eliminated JBL and his own brothers at arms. But that's the rule: every man for himself, and everybody was cheering for Roman Reigns. But that would have been the start of his, of him and his shield's face turn. That's what it should have been. Would have been, could have been, but no. It it hadn't been. However. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry, I dropped that. But, yeah. To what I'm saying. But back to what I'm saying. Of course. But, however... The origin of the story, which actually, you know what? Speaking of that, Brian, that's not originally what's gonna ha what, what's gonna happen. Well, what's gonna happen? It was gonna be Triple H versus CM Punk, but CM Punk quit on WWE. God, he's a quitter anyway. But however, he was a very unhappy with the finish. And I was uh, very unhappy. See, a plug would have won, but nope. But however, the doctors were not happy, so he was forced to be sent home right before he got released. And Dale Bryan was supposed to face against Sheamus, and Sheamus was going to be the heel. Was going to have a heel turn. But the Punk altered that plan and later gave it the heel turn to 2015. With the Lamar gimmick. And yeah, I mean, getting shaved with a mohawk and a braided beard? It looks stupid. Should have kept his lobster head or down the lobster head to like this, like I have right now. Now that would have been a better heel look. Give a mean beard. Now that would have been an excellent heel look. Yeah, but I'm glad Seamus is back to the way he is. Because I hate, I hate, hate, hate that mohawk look. But back to what I'm saying. Daniel Bryan was screwed out of the championship hunt again at the uh, event at WWE, at the Elimination Chamber. And he was also screwed out of. And then, of course, the best part of rest, the road of Russell Bay was Raw. Where every Daniel Bryan fans, or actors, of course, were occupying the ring. Wearing Daniel Bryan Yes shirts. The propaganda posters. 
And you know, I joined in the yes. Movement. Because, yeah, I've been a Dale Bryan fan ever since he got into WWE. Even if he retires, I'm still not going to stop watching wrestling. But, but yeah, it had pissed off Stephanie and Triple H. And, of course, with the match, Triple H just accepted his challenge. And then altered the challenge. Like, the winner will be going against, will go against Batista, who unfortunately eliminated Roman Reigns, and the fans were not happy about it. And of course, that's just the worst. That thing is worse since watching Game of Thrones Season 8. No joke, Season 8 Game of Thrones is terrible. I talk about that a lot. But, but, just like that. Thus, WrestleMania Match with Sports, Dale Prime. Of course, uh, Triple H was was having fun humiliating Dale Bryan. That Dale Bryan fought back and won. And then after he was to beat slapped by Stephanie, he hides his line along until Triple H attacked him from behind. And it injured him more. And decided to injure him more. And then Dale Bryan says, say he can still fight. Which, of course, led to the famous triple threat match. Randy Orton versus Batista and versus Dale Bryan for the WWE Championship, World Heavyweight Championship. And then, of course, with Dale Bryan, the uh, aftermath, of course. We're going to talk about it shortly. However, we are, of course, at the, no, match. Like it's story, of course. And yet, the referee was down, knocked down by Triple H. And he brought in Scott Armstrong. Who, of course, is now a corrupt referee. Part of the, the, the authority. And then that right Stopped him, and of course, injured Stephanie and Triple H. But of course, uh, Daniel Bryan was also down. Was also down. And he was carried away in a paramedic. But the match had continued. And nobody was rooting for either one. And yeah, I'm one of those fans. I did not root for either one. Until Dale Bryan came back and the fans were up their feet. And even Michael Cole, who was a critic for Dale Bryan, just, just cheered on Dale Bryan. He really did. He really did cheer on for Dale Bryan. But he heard him say, come on, Daniel. Come on, Daniel. Tap out Batista. Tap out Batista. And he just told Batista to tap out. Wow. I mean, this is like... Ned Jarrett cheering on his son to win the 1993 Daytona 500. And yeah, Batista tapped out to the f -line. And of course, everybody is celebrating. Not just his wife, not just the commentators, not just the WWE fans, but a special little boy named Connor. May God rest Connor's soul. He was found pancreatic cancer, and then, but then after, a, but after a marriage, a week later, he lost. But the aftermath of the match of winning the WWE Championship, unfortunately, there was personal tragedies too. Like two of them, one was his dad. Like, like right, right after they were off to their honeymoon, Daniel Bryan had lost his dad. Like I lost my dad. Oh, two months ago to COVID. And of course, weeks within days or weeks later, or a couple weeks later, Connor had succumbed to cancer. And 
And everybody at the WWE were talking positive things about Connor. And and yeah. And even Stephanie had it broken Stephanie when, you know, when talking about what Connor was to to the WWE. Like like watch the video and you can see why. Why it broke him that when he died. When it broke her when he died. And then of course Dan O'Brien was forced to vacate the title right before the match, which would have been in a casket match. Which would have been if Dan Bryant would have vacated. And then of course he and Brie would be fired. Would be tricked and get fired instead. To get them some time off. And then Dale Bryan returned, and then after he would be retired, but they replied with no. And then weeks later, he of course won a match, the latter match in WrestleMania against Wade Barrett and the others for the Intercontinental Championship. But then sadly he was forced to vacate it, and then with doing another injury, and then of course he held the tournament, which leads with Ryback versus whoever it was, and Ryback won the championship. But then, of course, with with after the Royal Rumble match, an unfortunate announcement that he had retired from WWE, and it was really sad to see him go because that's all. Dale Bryan loved was wrestling. But. But he came back two years later. And, well, he came back minutes later as the general manager. And then came back and wrestled, saying he can wrestle again. And now, best of luck to you, Dale Bryan, with your match against, against both Edge and Roman Reigns. Take home the WWE Universal Championship. But now, the moment you all be waiting for, I know it's going to be long. I know it's all, I know the limit is one is one hour, but I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. The number one match you've all been waiting for is none other than the Undertaker again with his win at the end of the era, and of course the loss, which ended the streak. But this is. Of course, backstory. He debuted in, in 1990 at the Survivor Series, which is one of the big four. And then, of course, he became undefeatable with the likes of Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, and of course, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Bray Wyatt, and John Cena. Oh, and also Ray, uh, Batista. But although he had two losses against Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. But this one is a career definer. And of course, he was involved in a Bury the Life match. And a Bury the Life match, let's just say, he don't have a pretty good record in that type of match. He, he fought against three times, and he was buried three times. Literally, too. Well, actually, literally buried. Not figuratively buried. And thus, gave us, they don't want none. With AJ Styles, and of course, what's going to be at, going to be at the where it is right now, at Tampa Bay. But due to COVID, however, the COVID pandemic, and yes, and the good part was, I had a I had a night off for that. I had a night off for Mark. And and this is my this is hands down with AJ Styles, Tawny, and call him Mark. And of course, with with of course AJ Styles. And they get rid of his Undertaker voice, and of course. Like I was running. Or Alex, or Alexander Jones. 
in a buried alive match. And he went from the dead man to the American badass to just Bart. And the best part of that is they played Metallica's Now That We're Dead as his theme song. And yeah, it's a no secret, of course, that both myself and The Undertaker are huge Metallica fans. And of course, you know, and I'm glad they played that. And of course, it begins with him getting the upper hand until the uh, arm to the window of the hearse. And of course, was beating. But AJ, you know, recounters. And then... And of course, with using the weapons at the Boneyard match, which is a, like a buried alive with no holds barred. And then, of course, here comes the Druids. And also, right before their release, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Right before their match. So, yeah. However,. But then AJ Styles, of course, uh, and it was still lining up with AJ Styles. And of course, sent him to the ground, and he was ready to bury him. They say ash to ash, dust to dust. Well, to use the lyrics of the memory remains. Damn it, AJ Styles, you're supposed to include fade to black. The memory remains. Don't you ever listen to Metallica, AJ Styles? You had one job! And then, of course, he was laugh uh, laughing about it. And then, I was laughing because the Undertaker, or I'm out of nowhere, was behind him and scared him. And then, of course, he sent AJ, he sent Gallows. To the you no know, tombstone and San Ga Gallo, uh, San Anderson down to his fall, and of course get AJ Styles a tombstone pile driver and then send him down to the face. And then AJ was pleading for his life and said, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." And uh, and Mark says, "Oh, you're sorry." And then of course he was he a uh, admired AJ Styles for being a tough guy and was respectful. And then, under t and then, of course, he was really, really happy that that he got to fight someone else. But then, of course, it kicked up to the hole. And then buried AJ Styles. This is the first and final buried alive match that he won. And of course, this is his last final WrestleMania match to win with a total record of twenty-five and two. And then the aftermath of his of the Undertaker himself, he had a documentary, One Last Ride, which I don't get why it's One Last Ride. And then in part five, I of course literally dropped my phone when he, after I heard his voice saying, "This time, the cowboy really rides away," and I just dropped my phone. Just thinking, but then of course, which translates to the Undertaker after after twenty or after uh, thirty years confirmed he is retiring from wrestling. But yeah, but hey, the thirtieth anniversary of the Undertaker, which marks, of course, Mark's final time to step in the ring. And of course, with superstars of that legacy, including his WrestleMania victims. They were very happy to talk about, you know. And then, The Undertaker, or Mark Calloway, entered as The Undertaker. And then he's like, it's time for the dead man to rest in peace. And then the best part to end his career was, of course, the hologram of Paul Bearer with the 
the late Paul Bearer, or William Moody, holding the yard saying, Oh, yes! And then he walked out of the ramp one last time. Thus ends the career of the phenom, the dead man, the American badass. Mark Calloway, also known as The Undertaker. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that match itself deserved the number one spot, for my opinion, for the best WrestleMania matches. And this one from last year was the best of all. Okay, guys, that's going to be about it for uh, this. Because uh, and uh, it's right after the uh, one-hour mark, ladies and gentlemen. Or uh, right left, and of course, get ready to do the WrestleMania with Peacock if you got the premium. Alright guys, I will see you guys next time on Be Nerdy and All.